As you learned earlier in the course, a state function is a property of a system that depends only on the current state of the system and not on the path that was taken to reach that state. Accordingly, the change in a state function in going from one state to another state depends only on the initial and final states and not upon the path taken between those two states. Examples of state functions that we've talked about are pressure, volume, internal energy, and enthalpy. Hess's law, which is stated here, provides us with a way of using the fact that enthalpy is a state function to calculate unknown reaction enthalpies from known reaction enthalpies. Here we see how this law can be used to determine the enthalpy change of a chemical reaction that would be difficult to determine experimentally. One such reaction is the oxidation of carbon in the form of graphite to form carbon monoxide. This is a difficult experiment to control. If you take graphite and ignite it in air where there is plenty of oxygen, you're going to produce carbon dioxide and not carbon monoxide. If you reduce the oxygen partial pressure enough, you'll get some carbon monoxide, but you'll still produce carbon dioxide as well. That makes it difficult to measure the enthalpy change of this reaction using calorimetry. So instead, we can, we can consider this reaction to be, the, to be the sum of these two reactions. In the first of these two reactions, combustion of graphite in the presence of plenty of oxygen converts all the graphite into carbon dioxide. And we can use calorimetry to determine the enthalpy change of this reaction, which turns out to be minus 393.5 kilojoules. The second reaction is the conversion of carbon dioxide to carbon monoxide. The experimentally determined enthalpy change for this reaction is plus 283.0 kilojoules. And so by adding these two values together, we can determine the enthalpy change for the oxidation of graphite to carbon monoxide, which turns out to be minus 110.5 kilojoules. We can see this idea graphically. What we want to know is delta H for converting graphite to carbon monoxide. We can't determine that directly, so we can define a path between these two things consisting of steps with experimentally known delta H values. Step one being the oxidation of graphite to carbon dioxide and step two being the elimination of oxygen from carbon dioxide to form carbon monoxide. Then we just add these two values together to get the enthalpy change for the reaction of interest, the conversion of graphite to carbon monoxide. Now review slides 4.7, 4.8, and 4.9 on your own before looking at slide 4.10 and the associated video.